ARDS, Adult Respiratory Distress Syndrome. This is also known as stiff lung. Also known as non cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Okay. Now, before we go for the basic problem, let's learn the basic pathology. What is this and how it is going to affect a patient? The main problem is there is a accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space of the lungs. So let's learn the basic pathology. Patho. Here is the alveolus. Here is the arteriole. This is the A alveolus. Small A is arteriole and this is the interstitium. Normally oxygen goes like this that is from alveolus to arteriole and CO2 comes like this it's normal physiology now in this ARDS there is increased capillary leakage so a protein rich fluid accumulates in the interstitium and that's why the lungs loses the elasticity that's why we call as stiff lung okay now what will happen to the physiology this oxygen which has to go from alveolus to artery and we know oxygen is a uh, water insoluble gas so it cannot come inside that lead to hypoxia but CO2 can very well go out. CO2 is a water soluble gas. So that lead to hypocapnia. So overall net result is it lead to type 1 respiratory failure. Because there is hypoxia with hypocapnia. This is the reason why it happens. Okay. So before I discuss more, let's learn more pathophysiology. I like to mention regarding FiO2. FiO2 stands for fractional inspiratory oxygen. What does this mean? Normally we are breathing we are from the atmosphere and we are taking oxygen. And normal oxygen is about 94% is the in the air. Uh, air is about 21% is the oxygen and it makes the oxygen saturation in the blood about 94%. So PA O2 in the blood, in the arterial blood is about 94. 21% is the oxygen what we are taking from atmosphere. For easy calculation I take it as a 20% for easy calculation. So out of 100 we are taking only 20% of the oxygen from the atmosphere. So in the scale of 120, in the scale of 1, it will be 0.2. This is known as FiO2. So normal FiO2, what you and me are, me are taking from the atmosphere is 0.2. So normal PaO2 in the blood is 94. Again, for easy calculation, I take it as a 90. And normal FiO2 is 0.2. So if I have to go for the ratio of PaO2 90 divided by FiO2 0.2, this comes out to be 450. This is the normal ratio of of course, the ratio will be higher than this because I have taken this as 90. In actuality, it's much more than 94 also. So, now what is happening in ARDS? Oxygen is not coming in the arterial. And as we know, the definition of respiratory failure 
when PaO2 is below 60, we call as respiratory failure, maybe type 1 or type 2. And the normal, suppose a PaO2 has come to 60, and this is 0.2. Now, now the ratio is 300. When the ratio is below 300, we call as mild ARDS. Okay? Suppose it is 40. PaO2 has gone to 40. 0.2. And when, it, now it is 200. And when it is less than 0.200, uh, when it is less than 200, we call as moderate ARDS. And if it is 20.2, now it is 100 and if it becomes more than 100 we call it severe ARDS. So the prerequisite for the ARDS is that uh, PaO2, FiO2 ratio should be less and one more criteria, it's the respiratory insult should be acute. It should be less than one week. Whatever problem is there, it should be within one week, not that is there for last six months. So acute onset problem with F ratio is less than 300 and of course the, in the chest x-ray you get bilateral infiltrate and this infiltrate are not explained by any other lung pathology like pneumonia effusion, nodules, collapse and it's not being explained by CHF also. So none of this pathology is there. So dear friends for ARDS, first of all they should not be, it should be acute onset problem. Number two, ratio of PaO2, FiO2 should be less than 300. And of course, pathology is not being explained by any of this, okay, of the problem. So let's see, what are the important causes of ARDS? Sepsis or infection is one of the most common causes. Pneumonias. Plasmodium falciparum, chest trauma, drowning, they are some of the important causes of ARDS. Of course, if you go to very high altitude, high altitude is That's why it is also known as high altitude pulmonary edema. Okay? Remember, in high in this so-called non-cardiologic pulmonary edema and cardiac pulmonary edema, what's the difference? In this entity, pulmonary arterial wedge pressure is less than 18 millimeter of mercury. In cardiac CHF, pulmonary arterial capillary capillary wedge pressure is more than 18 millimeter of mercury. This is the main difference between the cardiac and non-cardiac pulmonary edema. So here is the patient with us to whom we have to manage. The first thing is always, so in the treatment, first is to the basic cause. Suppose the sepsis is there or pneumonia are there, give them the broad spectrum antibiotic. Suppose due to pulmonary plasmodium falciparum, treat plasmodium falciparum. And if patient is in the very high altitude, bring them down to the sea level as possible, as possible, uh, as early as possible. But what else? Now patient is severely hypoxic. Suppose he has severe uh, ARDS, that means PA. O2 is less than 20, 20 percent, okay? Normally is more than 94 percent. And we have to give oxygen, but problem is it is full of liquid, full of fluid in the interstitium. Now what to do? 
Now we like to put the patient on ventilator. Ventilator. What ventilator will do? Ventilator will give the oxygen with a great pressure. And we have read in our physica, in our physics that if if a gas under pressure is there, its solubility increases. So we can use either volume ventilator or pressure. But it should be low tidal volume, low tidal volume ventilator should be less than 6 ml per kg. So once we are doing low pressure, uh, that, that means recovery is much better. And of course we can increase FiO2, increase FiO2, we can go up to 0.4 to 0.6. So that once FiO2 is more, more and more oxygen goes in the lungs. Other thing are we can put the patient on prone position. Prone ventilation is done. It really has much better outcome as compared to supine. And of course, some authorities do even recommend that we paralyze the respiratory muscle by cis atrophy so that when we are doing neuromuscular blockage,